Hello again, friends. This is Dr. Adi Adebanjo from Ambassade International uh, coming to you with Christmas greetings this season of Advent as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the greatest gift that God ever gave to mankind. I trust that you and your family are doing well and getting ready to celebrate Christmas. It will be a special celebration this year, giving thanks to God for all that he has done, sustained us, preserved us, watched over us for his faithfulness all through this year. For the last few days, we've been talking about Born to Shine on a series of teachings uh, revealing to us uh, the events uh, that surrounded the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, especially or particularly the visit of the wise men to come and worship him and finding or seeing how that relates to our lives today. So that the, the events of Christmas is not just uh, something historical that we celebrate, but it bears relevance to our lives as believers. So we've been talking about born to shine, about the fact that uh, the same way that when Jesus was born, a star arose in Bethlehem uh, that led wise men from a far country in search of a king that will be born, a savior that will be born, the savior of mankind. And they followed that star until it led them to the king and they were able to worship the king. We said the same way, whenever a person is born again, a star begins to shine. One of those stars that Abraham saw when he looked up in the sky and God told him, that's how many your descendants will be. We are one, you are one of those stars the moment you're born again. And as you shine brightly, you lead people. People are observing your life. People are seeing you, watching you, and you're giving them hope. You're keeping them going. You're bringing joy to them, even as you lead them to finding the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Today, as we continue, I want to talk about what makes your light shine. So we were born to shine, but what makes your light shine? Well, as the, as the title of the series suggests, uh, it is, number one is being born again. The moment you are born again, the moment you give your life to Jesus, a light begins to shine. A star arises. One of those stars in the, in the sky forever that will shine forever that are leading people to righteousness. So number one, you must be born again. The moment you give your life to Jesus, Jesus, who is the light of the world, comes into your heart and lightens your light. He said the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord. And that candle is lit the moment the light of the world, Jesus, comes into your heart. You begin to shine brightly. So you must be born again. The Bible's, uh, that's, that's number one. Number two, and importantly, in shining, is you have to maintain good works. In, indeed, number one and number two are connected. Uh, as the Bible shows us, you have to maintain good works. The Bible says in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus speaking, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may behold your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men. So the shining of your light, the shining of your star, is hinged upon them beholding your good works. Hallelujah. What causes or makes your light shine? It's good works. See what the Bible says in several scriptures. In Ephesians in chapter 2, from verse 8 to 10, Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, it says this, that for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then verse 10 says this, For we are his workmanship. In NIV, verse 10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So that's the reason we were born again, to do good works. And as we do those good works, our light continues to shine. And as our light shines, it is leading people, guiding people, directing people to Jesus Christ. See another verse that says this in, in Titus chapter 2. I'm going to read this uh, so that we understand the connection between your light shining and good works. In Titus chapter 2, from verse 11 to 14, he says, For the grace of God that 
has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to the intent that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our God, great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a people for his own possession that are zealous of good works, that are zealous of good works, that are eager, committed, sold out to doing good works. Because we understand that as we do those good works, that is what causes our light to shine and keep on shining. What are some of these good works? For example, worshiping the Lord, first and foremost. As you worship God, as you, as you give your life to and worship the Lord, that's good works. Remember the story of Mary? When she came and broke, broke that alabaster box of ointment and, and poured it on the feet of Jesus and worshiped him, and worshiped him with her treasure, with her life, wiping, uh, washing his feet with tears, wiping them with her hair, worshiping the Lord, lavishing her love and worship upon Jesus. You know what Jesus said? When people were frowning at uh, what she did, saying that she wasted all that perfume, she could have been sold for this and given to the poor. Jesus said this, she, he said, she has wrought a good work on me. Hallelujah. So worshiping the Lord and laying your life before him, lavishing your gifts, talents, treasures unto the Lord, it's a good work. Hallelujah. Other examples of good works include walking in love, walking in peace. When there's chaos all around and you are in peace, that's a good work. Blessing those who curse you, doing good to those who hate you, praying for those who despitefully use you and persecute you, those are good works. Maintaining the joy of the Lord in spite of circumstances, that's good works. All these things are, are, are what people observe and gives them hope, makes them wonder, my goodness, and makes them look onto you and invariably follow you until they find Jesus. Another example of good Jesus, another example of good works is giving of your resources, giving of your money, giving of your time, giving of your resources. See what Timothy says in 1 Timothy in chapter 6, verse 17 to 18. He says, charge them that are rich in this present world that they be not high-minded, nor have their hopes set on uncertain riches, but on God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Verse 18, that they do good, that they are rich in good works, that they be ready to distribute, willing to communicate, willing to share. Rich in good works, sharing your resources, being a blessing, blessing people, paying your tithe, giving offerings to advance the kingdom cause, blessing people, these are good works. Walking in kindness. But ultimately, and one of the most important good works you can do is to share your testimony and to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, when you do that, your light shines so brightly that it dispels all darkness around you. That is why associated with doing that is a joy. There's a joy that comes from witnessing for the Lord. There's a peace, there's a contentment, there's a satisfaction because you're doing what you are born to do, which is to shine. So as you do these different things, these are good works that causes your light to shine brightly. And remember, as our light shines, it is leading and guiding people until they find the King their heart and their soul is looking for. His name is Jesus. You were born to shine, so shine brightly. Give your heart to Jesus, your light begins to shine. And then maintain good works because that's what causes you to shine brightly and ultimately causes people to give glory to the name of the Lord. I hope you receive this today. All through this Christmas season, there's plenty of opportunity for us to do these good works. Family is going to be around, you're going to be around people, interacting with people. It's opportunities to show kindness, to walk in love. Take time to worship the Lord and focus and spend some time with Jesus. Here's the reason for this season. Don't be taken up with all the activity of Christmas and the festivities and the gifts and all that. Take time to worship Him, your light will shine. Walk in love towards people, walk in kindness. 
your light will shine. Share of your resources. Be a blessing to somebody this Christmas. Your light is shining. And as your light shines, people are observing you. And like those wise men, you are leading people to find the king that they are looking for. His name is Jesus. God bless you until I see you again next time. Tomorrow, by the way, and we'll see in our final installment of this, how to keep that light shining. How do I maintain that light shining bright? We'll see that tomorrow. God bless you. I love you. Merry Christmas on behalf of my family and I. We wish you a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.